Hey everybody, this is Larry the Cable Guy. Check this out. So I'm in my truck driving with my buddy, and we was heading up to the men's warehouse to fart in the suits, and he's listening to his phone. And I said, that sounds like Hermie Sadler. He said, it is Hermie Sadler. He's got a podcast called Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I said, Sadler and the Senator? He said, yeah, that's his good buddy, Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley. I said, well, what in the world? He didn't know this. I said, did you know? that Hermie Sadler was voted one of the 50 best looking drivers in NASCAR? He said, I did not know that. I said, cause it ain't true. <laughs> you never know though, he never takes off his helmet. But I know one thing, this show leaning right, turning left is good. So pull up a chair right there by your phone, get yourself a cold beer and give a listen right here to this week's episode of Leaning Right, Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I'll tell you what, I bet Michael Waltrip's even listening. He's always wanted to do something like that. Oh, Sadler, got another one over on Waltrip. Get her done! Thank you, Larry the Cable Guy. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right. And my turning left man is not here right now because it's a weekday, and we're trying to get this special edition of Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator out before one of the biggest modified races on the East Coast, known as the King of the Modifieds, Coming this Saturday, March 23rd, at South Boston Speedway. Historic South Boston Speedway. And I'm joined today so that you, the listener, can learn all about what's coming up on Saturday, why you need to go to the racetrack. Uh, so why not bring the guy that knows everything, the president, CEO, Grand Poobah, El Jefe of the Smart Series, the Southern Modified Auto Racing Teams Tour, Christopher Williams. Hello, Chris Williams. Well, hello, Senator. Thank you. Hello, Christopher. Yeah. Thank you for coming up here to my law office here on a Tuesday. Well, I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, luckily, there are no warrants and there's no sheriff waiting outside, so you're good. Well, I heard a siren go by, so I was looking to make yeah. sure they weren't coming after me. You jerk my head to the left there because, you know, that could be like a personal injury case. Yeah. Right? We'll have to stop taping if I hear any kind of crashing noises out there so I can throw my cards out into the street. There you go. Get a client, but... We're here at the Stanley Law Group at the Mothership in Manita, Virginia, the historic Holland Duncan House, and I got Chris Williams with me. It was really important. I talked to the sponsors, and they had all said, hey, let's do a promo for the King of the Modifieds. This is going to be one of the biggest races ever at South Boston and one of the biggest races on the East Coast for open-wheel modified racing. So this is what we're going to talk about today, Chris. I hope you didn't have any other topics to talk about. No, man. This is this has been the topic <laughs> now for about six months. You're not kidding. And you've been right behind every yeah, bit of it. You're not kidding. And, uh, you know, with the sponsors that's come on and, you know, Dominion coming on on board is just going to be just adding to what Pacematic has already put in front of everybody. So there and, you go. Lead and, with the sponsors. That's good. You're wearing your Pacematic hat I see in your Smart Series jacket. Oh, I, I believe But we've Pace-O-Matic. got big sponsors. I mean, we've got some of the finest sponsors in all the Commonwealth of Virginia. Not just Pacematic, which has been a huge sponsor of the Smart Series for now, what, going on three years? Forever. Yeah. We're I mean, now married. It, it, we're, right? now, we're never it's, letting go. And they have shown quite a commitment uh, to you all. And really, it's a part of demonstrating Pacematic, for those that don't know, and if you're listening to this podcast, you know all too well. They not only sponsor this podcast, but they sponsor our race team and they sponsor the series. And they did so. They came to us and said, we want to demonstrate because they were trying to get skill games were actually in Virginia. Hermie and I had a lawsuit when skill games were banned, got it turned back on for 23 months. And they were like, look, we want to be a part of the Virginia experience. We want to be in those rural areas. We want to be demonstrating that we're not just some company that, you know, wants to operate here, that we're a part of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And they certainly did that by sponsoring the smart series tour and and the other things that they've done in the communities, giving out checks and donations to, to the needy and and to those organizations, those not-for-profits that really need the help. They have been a good partner here in the Commonwealth of Virginia and they've been a great partner for the smart series. Talk a little bit about what the Pace-O-Matic branding has meant to the smart series over the past three years. It means everything. I mean, uh, you know, we were out there trying to understand how we were going to create a platform, and you can't do it without the backing of the sponsors and the platform that the sponsors present. And when I heard the, the mission statement of, of what uh, Paul and Gina and, and Mike and those folks. Was Alan t- Joseph. Alan Joseph, great guy. Yeah. I love Alan. Jesus, Mary, and Alan Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But those guys, they're family, um, but they also care about – you know, not just you, but small businesses and they care about the community and they show it. They just, they just don't talk it. 
Um, and if you've ever been with them in any of their functions, whether it's, you know, out in Wyoming or, you know, at one of their functions, you know, in their states that, you know, they, they take pride in being a part of, um, you know that they give back and they care about those individuals. They care about the convenience store owners. They care about the local communities. And, you know, when the, the, they seen what we were doing as a startup um, and seeing what we were going through and, and visited up in Rafford and, and uh, Pulaski at the racetrack, and they they seem to enjoy it quite extensively. And, you know, you and Hermie and everybody that was there, they just – you can tell they had a passion for what somebody else had a passion for and they wanted to be involved in it. And now that I know them the way that I know them, like I said, I mean, we would never be where we're at without them. Um, I mean, going into four years basically of it, three years with them. Um, you it's, have a solid agreement with them to uh, continue to sponsor the tour. Absolutely. And, you know, just knowing what they're trying to do. Um, you, you know, know, it's not just their name on it. They contribute. Oh, 100%. And they constantly contribute at each race. Oh, well, look. To make it a better experience for well, everybody, well, including not just the drivers, but the fans as well. 100%. They get to know the drivers. They get to understand what's going on at the racetrack. They get to understand what the racetrack's trying to do and helping them out. They, I mean, they're, they're, they're purchasing suites. They're bringing their customers in for them to have the experience and show what we're all about, which enhances not only their business, but our uh, sport. And so you can't find partners like that everywhere. And when they're invested in it with you, I mean, look, they took an investment into this race itself. I mean, they wanted us to showcase, to have the largest modified race. And they, because but, before you've never had the king no, of the modifieds, this no, is the first year, right? Right. 100. This is the inaugural race of the king of the modifieds. And, you know, a lot of people, when we started talking about it a year and a half ago, well, you can't do it. You know, you don't have the facility to do it. You don't have the money to do it. You'll never get over hundred thousand dollar purse. You know, it just the one thing after another. And so you're like, well, wait a minute. It it can happen. I mean, not one person can bite it all. Not one sponsor can bite it all. Not one racetrack can bite it all. Depending on the the people in the grandstand in the back gate, and then you had to put it in a place where it could house internally what you're trying to do, right? Which is race cars movement of cars, days, operations. Then you got to start thinking about external businesses like hotels and food and, you know, everything and how big you want this thing to be and grow because the first year is usually the teaser. It really gets bigger. The it's, it, it, it's the tryout. It's just what you're doing to enhance what you're going to do in the future. And I know you really helped out tremendously on all of this because you believed in the smart tour and you believed in what we were doing from a platform. Absolutely. And then we, we spent some nights together and talking about how we were going to grow it. Um, you introduced me to some great individuals, N not all of them come through, but they understood what we were trying to do. Um, and then getting involved in the ones that uh, come on board um, you couldn't find better partners, um, and they're going to have some fun. They're going to realize this is this this adds to the community, not just travel, not just revenue, not just taxes, um, but also what we're trying to do with the tracks. You know what we're trying to do. Well, with I think the, it also makes the the sponsor uh, it enhances their their profile, especially when they're willing to come down into the rural areas and to support short track racing, which is so important that we not only save because it's a part of the American heritage but especially the virginia heritage but also for those grassroots ra racers those homegrown teams um and getting behind them uh and that community especially a community as great as south boston who i used to represent in the senate and even though that's not my district anymore i still represent them because i'll never south boston left my district but i've never left south boston and that is one of the most historic tracks and not only do we have Paysomatic taking the lead on its sponsorships, but you were able to bring on some some other big ones. Yeah, well, um, let's talk about your other sponsors yeah. before we get into the race and the history yeah. of the track and what's coming up. Yeah, Dominion Energy has taken a big role in uh, partnership with us and the this, largest and, corporations in the Commonwealth. Oh, oh my God, and so great to work with. Uh, they've been a blessing not only from a sponsorship standpoint, but I got some surprises for them they don't know about yet. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't I'm know if Dominion say. Energy likes surprises, <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully they're not the kind that they're used to getting. 
<laughs> like from the uh, state corporation commission or oh no it's not you know, like those stupid environmentalists <laughs> that like strap themselves to their the chain link fence yeah. of their no, it's uh, not know, that kind of surprise fire plants and stuff <laughs> it's not it's okay. not that kind all right, of surprise all right, good, good. it's going to be a positive surprise yeah exactly okay well, and that's that's fine yeah and so you know working with them and uh, like i said real easy and what they wanted uh you know they wanted uh a little bit and not the forefront of what's going on, but at the same time, they definitely wanted to help out, you know, the community and help out us as well as the racetrack. And uh, it's been a great blessing with them. We got Vista, of course. Uh, Vista installation. Yep. Yeah, uh, and it's, the CEO is exceptionally brilliant and smart. Re- she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> She's also my wife. She is. And, uh, Laura has done a, an incredible job. She's taken a company her family started that, uh, does all the installations started out doing installations for floors, doors, and windows, and now does uh, doors and windows for Lowe's and has basically all of North Carolina. And I think a little bit of South Carolina. Uh, so that's the race in the world. And, and she's actually had her crews installing uh, doors and windows for NASCAR drivers. I won't say who, but yeah. she gets the picture of the installer doing a selfie with the uh, NASCAR yeah. driver. <laughs> and so she's had a connection to racing, not just yeah. loving it with, as my family does, my son Chandler does. Yeah. I knew she had a connection kids. when we went to the uh, football game and the soccer game in Charlotte and she was down uh, on yeah. the field, basically yeah, yeah. in the and, low suite, in this low suite with everybody zone. else. Mm-hmm. And I knew who she knew. And it's like, well, wait a minute, yeah. hold on. You know, so it was pretty yeah, fun. She's pretty fancy. Yeah, she's way above my pay grade. Oh, yeah. And, you, uh, yeah. You, you, and, outkick, and you outkicked your coverage. And <laughs> yes. And so Vista installations has come on board to sponsor, to, to increase the purse for the King yes. of Modifieds race, which is Saturday, March 23rd. You can still get your tickets, man, at the door. But you can go on southbostonspeedway.com and get the uh, get advanced tickets that you can pick up right at the door. Uh, but it is going to be a heck of a race. And, uh, and, and Vista Installations, what a great sponsor. Great sponsor. I can't say anything else. And then, and then, the, and then, <laughs> the, I get in trouble. And, and then, <laughs> and then, and then the, the, the person who kicked us over the 100,000 plateau, which everybody said we would never get to, is, of course, yours truly. The Stanley Law, Law Group <laughs> and the Stanley SLG Consulting, actually. And so, yeah, we, you know, you and I had that conversation. Actually, it was kind of like a challenge. We won't say under what circumstances no, that challenge occurred. Uh, but it seemed to me that that if that was w- what was holding us back, especially with all the progress you'd made with the series, and especially with all the, the promise of what this race can be and will be, not just on Saturday, but also in the future for modified racing for short tracks, you know, bringing racing back in a big way in Virginia and the Commonwealth, man. Um, I just couldn't turn that opportunity down. So uh, SLG Consulting, which is my consulting group, Stanley Law Group, PLLC, which is my, the lawyer end of my uh, businesses. We uh, we ponied up some cash and you made did. sure you went over the hundred thousand dollar mark. Man, we were proud as as ever. Oh, we were. To be we didn't know if that was going to be a number we would get to, and it's yeah. been seven to eight months of just talking and circumventing, and you know we had a lot of other people we talked to and. I think in the future they'll come around and, and be a part oh, yeah. of it in a certain way. Yeah. But to I think get got to see it to believe it. 100%. And see where the payoff is. Because well, there is a lot of well, payoff. This is going to be fun. What you getting ready to see? Yeah. Uh, Saturday or Sunday, depending yeah. on the weather. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Don't jump but, the gun, guy. Big boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 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 and so let's talk a little bit about, I mean, so you came up with this king of the modifieds. I mean, you're in year two, year three. You're thinking, you well, actually, year two, hey, how do we make something spectacular like a Super Bowl in the beginning yeah. of the season, kind of like Daytona, but for for modified racing, open-wheel modified racing, uh, and where do we do it? What was your thought process? Well, you get- I mean, it started back, you know, we needed a showcase event, but we didn't really know what it was going to be called at first. And, and you know, Matthew Dillner, myself, you, other individuals talked about, you know, how do you bring that showcase about? What's the purse structure should be? You know, where are you going to get it from? Who who invests in that? And then, you know, how do you put that platform on and where? And so my mind just started going back and forth with Matthew Dillner and a few others. And it's like, you know, everything's loaded up on the back end of the season other than the spring sizzler, which is always the last weekend, basically, of April. And what's uh, the spring sizzler? Oh, it's the modified race. That's the Napa spring sizzler, 51st, 52nd year of it. Um, it's been going on for... Is that up uh, in the north? Oh, yes. It's Stafford Springs. Um, great facility. I've been up there two out of the last three years. Uh, it's a showcase event. Big purse? For, big purse. It's it's really good. It's a two-day purse um, to combined, a single day. You know, we're, we're there. 
So are they two separate races up there at the same Yeah, time? so they do uh they do they a prelim. Well, yeah, it's a preliminary uh like a dash on a Saturday. And uh then Sunday uh is the spring sizzler itself and the roots and them that own the racetrack and them's been doing it for years. It's a mainstay. It's you know, it's it's been traveling. We've had a lot of the southern guys go up there. I know Satch Worley and a bunch of them's raced there and you know, but it's it's been forever and but it's always the end of April and, and to be honest with you, the biggest event that used to be the biggest event that used to be um was in martinsville everybody from the north would come down in martinsville in march and you know would run the dogwood you know 500 oh, yeah, the dogwood yeah, yeah. and so the virginia 500 it, yeah yeah well the virginia 500 was a cup side but the dogwood and the cardinal was always the um the double header the Oblum. late model yeah and modifieds okay and so it was all we still have that with the virginia's for lovers 150 yeah, that's right that's but right. we got rid of the open wheel modified at Martinsville. Uh, you, 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 Martinsville went away from the double header um, in the nineties, like ninety two, ninety three, and then they brought it back with a single event um, a couple of times, and now they run the fall classic, you know, which is the championship for the wheeling side, right? In the last week of October, so, but there was always two, ra- three races. They had the one, the one fifties on Saturday, and then they had the two. Um, uh, the, the uh, Dogwood 500 and the uh, Cardinal uh, 500 at the end of the year. I never went to those. Oh, they were unbel- They were they were something to behold. All that used to take me a lot of races, but yeah, didn't oh, get those. Oh man, back in the day, those races was unbelievable. I mean, I can I can sit there as a young kid and, and didn't and, somebody die at the track? Yeah, well, a couple. Or oh, Richie did. The, the the king of modifieds. Oh my god, Richie Evans was uh, passed away and uh, in one of those races. And 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 practice for one of those races. Oh my. And, and, and Charlie Jazombeck passed away at the racetrack in one of the events. Uh, so you were a young guy, and and for people who haven't listened to our podcast before, we've interviewed and and spoken with Chris Williams on a couple of occasions. Maybe you're probably our most prolific guest. And um, you well, know, I, who could forget your, show, the, uh, your show's going downhill? <laughs> well, who could forget the famous Little Timmy? Yeah. Oh, uh, Little Timmy, where is Little Timmy? That <laughs> Little Timmy's at school. That's my son who yeah. got mad at me for. Calling him Little Timmy. <laughs> talking to, but you were right there. We were at the pool. It was fun. Uh, above Grand Pool, we were having a good time. And, yeah. And he was funny. But, you know, if you've listened to, you go back in our library, um, there's the King of Merch uh, episodes, one of our first of a handful of episodes mm-hmm. that we started with a couple of years back. And we talked to Chris and Chris's other life. Uh, number one, your dad was one of the managers or the manager yeah. of the Martinsville Speedway. So you lived basically right on that property oh, yeah. and your mom still lives there to this day. Yeah. I apologize to Clay Campbell here in a NCI deal we had on stage last year that I probably snuck in that racetrack before daddy started working there probably about 10 years. So I, I stood up and handed him a hundred dollar bill and I said, that'll take care of about 10 of them back then at $7 and I'm a sure piece. He took that no, he didn't take it, really? but I, no, but, but, but he, he said he knew. So he, I guess he's seen me. He, he just didn't catch me. So these were, these were races you would have watched growing up. Oh, I uh, listen to me. My, before daddy went to work there, I would go down and I, nobody knows this story, but, uh, Clay's mom, Dorothy, and she called my mom at, I was three years old. And she called my mom. I lived at the top of the street. Three years On the old. Same side of the track. Yes. And she says, You missing something? And she says, What? And she said, Your son's down here on the front row kicking his feet. We're standing here watching him. <laughs> and so mama comes down, sits down beside him, and she said, What you doing? I said, Watching race cars. <laughs> <laughs> I walked all the way down, walked in the gate, three years old, watching race cars. And that's that, a true story. That really set the stage for your life, didn't it? Yes. And it from did. From there, if and again, you got to listen to listen to all of our library, but the past episode with, when you describe, you know, growing up there on the Martinsville track, having your dad work for Martinsville, and then how you got your start in NASCAR, uh, working for for the Intimidator, the yes. King. I mean, the the number the one man, guy, Dale the Earnhardt Senior, and revolutionized, helped revolutionize the way merchandise is dealt with, not just in race cars, in NASCAR, but also in sports in general, and. It's a hell of a story, and I'd love to sit there and talk to you about this. Well, you, you're another. supposed to be doing my book. You're supposed to be doing my audio for this book. Because yeah, we need to sit down and do this. It's, um, and I'll just, you know, I've, you had, I've had a very blessed life um, around the racing world and the community, um, not only from the relationships that I've built and, and not only in Cup, because, I mean, great friends with Baba Labonte, great friends with Rusty Wallace, great friends with Elliot Sadler and 
I know Hermie's in the mad now because he says you're, you're better Hermie friends with yeah than me. But Hermie is the man. Yeah, Hermie and is he's the not man. here today, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. So you don't get the wit and wisdom of Hermie Sadler, but uh, hopefully I can make up for it. But this is a special edition: of leaning right and turning <laughs> yeah. left with Sadler and the senator. There's just no Sadler; it's just the senator so far. Yeah, and so I, I built those relationships, and uh, I was blessed because I got to see and hear the inner workings from Bill France to Dale to. You know, all of these guys, these team owners with Childress and Hendrick, and, and, you know, I got to be a part of basically the decision that was being made and how they wanted this thing to go forward. And so I was really blessed on the backside. But then being in the racing community and the modifieds, you know, uh, I got to know some of the guys from the late model side with Jimmy Hensley and, you know, Butch Lindley and uh, some of those guys got to talk with Sam Ard and Harry Gant and some of those guys at legends. that level. They're all legends. And and I got a good relationship legends with them. Legends in the kind of racing that you're trying to preserve. Right. Exactly. And then the modified side, you know, Satch was my guy growing up, you know, my hero that I wanted to watch. And, you know, uh, Paul was always great. And I got to know them with Clarence Pickerel and Allen and those guys. And, you know, I got Flute Hudson. I got to go because he lit, the people don't know that that building that the racetrack has off of turn four. Uh, for maintenance up on top of the hill was Flute Hutchins Race Shop. Oh, really? uh, Gerald Compton drove for him. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, the double zero, which I yeah. own today. So, Oh, that's the one yeah, you got. Yeah. So gotcha. so a lot of people don't know the inner workings. I'd go over and see Flute and, you know, hang around the garage and David would be over there. Bobby Fisher and him get, would be over there. And we were young running around, but I would get to see him build those race cars. And Clay started driving for him in go-karts and other things, which a lot of people don't know. Clay Campbell. Yeah. And so. Well, Clay was a racer before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We, uh, we, we talked about it, um, racing go-karts on a racetrack when we'd have to have signals when his granddaddy would pull up we would act like we're practicing instead of racing we'd throw the yellow out every time to slow down we wouldn't know what the yellow's coming out wait a minute you guys are go-karting on the martinsville Speedway. Yeah. oh yeah are you serious oh yeah a- a- we had a broke arm we won't tell it wasn't me or clay but we had a broke arm <laughs> and uh but we, we we were never racing to, right. to mr earls we were never racing you were practicing yeah and and and, and even to the point where people don't know this story but even one time we 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 had an issue with the geese because the geese would poop everywhere. Well, and well, so right, right, right. Uh, well, I gotta tell you, I gotta ro- I gotta roll it back. Right. I gotta tell the story. Tell the story. So we're sitting there, and I, we lived on the racetrack road, and me and Scotty Ashby, Tim Pace was there, and but uh, me and Scotty got into most trouble because we started throwing rocks at Clarels as geese. That's that's his family, you know. That's his babies. So he liked the geese. Oh yeah, he fed them every day. Some bean would come in with a load of bread every week, and he'd feed them bread. But they would more bread you consumed, the more poop you would. Yeah, yeah. You would ex- it's not ex- really good for you. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. So we were throwing it. rocks at them. So Claire Earls picked us up in the pace car one day. Actually, drove us to the police station, which is right across the street. <laughs> Nobody was there, so then he decides to take us to our parents. Well, Scotty was the first drop, and uh, Ethel and them come to the door. And, How old are you at this time? Uh, young. <laughs> I mean, like nine, ten, maybe, okay. maybe, okay. and. Uh, so need, needless to say, they went to straight into beating Scotty for throwing rocks at the geese. Just beat <laughs> Got a whooping. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, gone. I'm done. Like, I'm finished. I'm over. It's done. So I'm two houses up across the street. So we pull in there. And my dad was sitting at the table eating dinner on the floor. And he would always sit at the coffee table. And my daddy didn't even get up. He waved his fork at me and Mr. Earl to come in the door. So we come in the door and I sit down. And Mr. Earl says, Orban? This is before he was working with him. He said, Orban, caught your boy throwing rocks at the geese. Daddy's chewing steak. Chewing. Daddy chewed about 58 times. He's still chewing. He ain't said a word. <laughs> he looks at me. He looks up at Mr. Earls. And he said, now, Orban, I know you're going to take care of this. And, you know, I, I, I love these geese. I love them. Said, yes, sir. Daddy's looking at me, looking at Mr. Earls. And he said, will you take care of it? Daddy says, yes, sir. I got to take care of it. Mr. Earls leaves out the door. I'm like, I'm in trouble. Clay Earls. Yeah, I'm in trouble. The famous Clay Yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm waiting. Daddy's chewing. About three minutes goes by. I'm like, hey, you don't say something? <laughs> yeah, said, what's the deal? He turns and looks at me, and he says, the rocks at the geese? Yes, sir. Did you hit any of them? No, sir. You should have killed them. I'm tired of walking on this shit all the time. <laughs> and so I'm like... I'm not in trouble. <laughs> you didn't get no beating. No, I didn't get no beating. Mm. He didn't say another word. Really? Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, 
I got by that one. <laughs> of course, Scotty went too happy with me about two hours later when I told him I didn't get a beating. You told that? Yeah, but uh, that's that's the kind of stuff that uh, the road was made out of. You know, we had a we had a good niche uh, folks on the road with the young folks and. Uh, you know, Claire Earls and them would uh, oh, rule that rule that street. But uh, back in the day, especially when Martinsville was at its oh, zenith, I mean, it oh was my god, really it exciting. was so much fun. In Martinsville, we would come down to visit Martinsville in the summertime, yeah, and it was the best. And not until about the late nineties did it change. But uh, but what a, what a great historical story! But you grew up right next to the track. Yeah, your dad eventually gets a job working. Yeah, comes manager. Yeah, then I had to learn how to cut onions and had to do all this other stuff that I wasn't prepared to do. Because, I mean, I'm a love racing, right? I want to be down there watching a the race. Right. Well, yeah. when you're 12, 13 years old, guess what? You're working. You're child labor, right? <laughs> you did put you to work? <laughs> put, hey, we're cutting onions today. All day. Like all, all day. All day. hot dog. Yeah, all day. You know, Sunday morning, we get up at 4 o'clock and we're down there at 5 lighting the <clears throat> burners. Because back in the day when they had the real hot dogs. Yeah, the real ones. They steamed the buns. They put the uh, weenies in the in the boilers. Don't put your weenie in a boiler now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to let that one sit. <laughs> but, but anyway, so people didn't realize all that stuff had to transpire. I mean, it, it was stuff that had to get done. Then we'd go put the chairs out. You know, for back then, the top level, we had foam seats, you know, like padded seats. Kind of that. That was the upper and crust so we would, They have like 15 of us putting those seats out, you know. Oh, wow. And then we'd turn around and we'd start hawking programs. You'd be selling programs. You would. I'd be out there selling programs, programs. It's program. Speedway. Two dollars. You know what I'm saying? While Richard Petty's doing laps. while Richard Petty's doing laps, I'm selling programs. My goodness. And then Daddy'll call on the radio. Hey, they need more buns. So I'd have to go over to the warehouse, grab the buns. I'd have to put it on the sheet that I delivered X amount of buns, and then I'd have to go do burgers. Then I have to go do hot dogs, and then we'd have to do drinks. And Fuzzy's barbecue would be in there, all their slaw and stuff. And yeah, then at an order, I'd have to go get the Fuzzy's guy because Jesse Jones would have the truck there. Like the year they changed to Jesse Jones, it went ape crap. The Woods Brothers is the one that went ape crap because wow. the hot dog was changed. Yeah. So now it's Jesse <laughs> Jones. The pink hot dog, the red hot dog, whatever you call yeah. it. The, the famous Martinsville hot dog is a Jesse Jones. Well, it was. I, th I think I, it still I, is. Uh, did it go back to it? I think it's Smithville for a while. Whatever yeah. it happened, it changed. Okay. But <clears throat> what was it? But what was the original hot dog? Jesse Jones. That's the red original. hot dog. Okay. Because I remember those things. Yeah, with with fuzzy slaw. They, they'd leave a little stain on your face. You don't. It, 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 they left stain everywhere. <laughs> they leave it on the bun. <laughs> everywhere, I yeah. said. If it dripped. <laughs> it everywhere. Get, yeah, yeah. Inside and out. <laughs> yeah. Eat those things. But yeah. they were good. And yeah. I mean, they yeah. were extremely good. For a while, people don't know that when... The Woods Brothers went to NASCAR, and they all had their meltdown. Clay and Daddy them made those specific hot dogs just for the infield for a while until they had to all move them back. Because the Wood Brothers were not... They were not happy okay. that they changed the hot dog. Now, I heard a story, and, and, and tell me if this is true or not, but then the crews that would come in would have a competition, mm -hmm. and that in the underhang, mm -hmm. the overhang where the cars would be, mm -hmm. I guess you call that the garage, but it's yeah. more like an overhang, right. that they would mark... How many like, hot dogs? Uh, one, two, three, yes. four, slash 100%. Five. How many each team or yes. each person was eating? Yes. And the record was somewhere in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Oh, every like, bit of it. Earnhardt, team or Earnhardt, would, Earnhardt would get hot dogs and tell us not to tell Teresa. And he would eat 12 hot dogs a day. 12 <laughs> a day. And, and, and the first thing we would say is, don't tell Teresa. You can tell anybody else, but don't tell Teresa how many <laughs> ate. Now, I've got to tell you this because I've eaten the Jesse Jones. I've eaten a pig <laughs> hot dog. I've gotten the stain on my fingers and on my shirt. They don't taste as good outside the racetrack. Because they're... The, so what's the secret? They're not, they're not steaming the buns and they're not boiling the stuff anymore. Okay. But, 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 but that's, that's the problem. You can take a crappy hot dog and but make listen, it delicious. If you can have a wet... The bull ring If you can stuff. take a wet bun and get the same slaw that Fuzzy's had and that's make slow. a Jesse Jones and you wrap it while it's steamed and, and it all comes together mm -hmm. that's the way to do it right now you'll get breads kind of hard or whatever they're still great they're great but people don't know what greatness is because they didn't have them back in the 70s, 70s and 80s 90s. and then in the 90s and then when they changed them you know i mean they would sell three times more if if they would they would they would steam them like they used to they used to say people would buy bags of them oh yeah we would take them home like bags. we would take them home and eat them three or four days heat them up I mean, the, you know, and, and it's funny because at South Boston, they've got the bologna burger. Yes. Martinsville has the hot dog. I don't yes. know of any other racetrack that has a food product that is, is synonymous with racing and a track 
as the hot dog for Martinsville. No, there's 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 different tracks that have different things, but you're right. Like I the think the Pocono Onion Ring. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? No, there's a hot dog. Swatsburg or, or whatever it's called. <laughs> you don't know what the name of it is. But no, I mean, you're right. I mean, I think that of all the racetracks, the destination wise, there's probably the best two that you know you're going to get a bologna burger and you're going to get a hot dog. Yeah. And Martinsville, and, I used to, you know, we'd go down to the race and they go, how many hot dogs do you eat? Not who won the race. No. Now you go to South Boston, people go, did you try this? See, here's burger. the deal. How many bologna burgers? I don't eat hot dogs. I don't eat them during the year. I don't like them. But I will eat Martinsville Speedway hot really? dogs. Yeah, it's it's that's the only time of year I Ladies eat. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a fun fact to learn from Chris Williams. <laughs> hates hot dogs, but will eat them at the track. And, and you know what? They that's probably true. taste better than a hot dog outside the track. One hundred percent. Now the bologna burger. Unless you're at DNA. Yeah. D DNA, right there above the street, right across from the old Coke plant. Yeah. Now they got a good hot dog in town. Right. I think they I think they kind of stole some of the thunder out of the, the thunder. You know what I'm saying? The Martinsville thunder. Well, you know, we could all talk about hot dogs every day, but let's talk about the bologna burger. Let's get back to South Boston. Yeah. Hi, folks. This is Hermie Sadler. Thanks for listening to our all-new podcast, Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I hope you are enjoying the show as much as Senator Stanley and I enjoy bringing it to you. Whether you're a family traveling together or a truck driver hauling freight up and down the highway, I hope you will take the time to visit one of our Sadler Travel Plaza locations in Virginia and North Carolina. Sadler Travel Plaza locations are licensed dealer locations for pallet travel centers. And we also carry Shell Motiva Petroleum products for our four-wheel friends. We pride ourselves on providing one-stop shopping for service, food, and entertainment. Our food options include Five Guys Burgers and Fries, Quiznos, Dairy Queen, Hermie Sadler's Faux Show Bar and Grill, Victory Lane Restaurant, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts, and much, much more. Our locations include Sadler Travel Plaza in South Hill, located off I-85 at exit 12. The Sadler Travel Plaza of Emporia, which is conveniently located on exit 11B off I-95. And Sadler Travel Plaza on Highway 58 in Suffolk. We also have our North Carolina location, Sadler Travel Plaza in Dunn, North Carolina, that's exit 75 off I-95. We appreciate all of our customers. And Bill and I appreciate you listening to Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pacematic. Hey, this is Bill Stanley, Hermie Sadler's sidekick on this podcast. When I'm not in Richmond at the Capitol or doing this podcast, my real job for the past 27 years is as a trial attorney with the Stanley Law Group. Here at the Stanley Law Group, we represent our clients in every courthouse in the Commonwealth. No problem is too small for us to solve. No case is too big for us to win. Whether it's criminal charges, traffic offenses, civil disputes, litigation matters of any sort, we handle it all. We make sure that we treat every client like family because they are to us. Your problem is our problem. Your success is our success because we hate to lose more than we love to win. And believe me, we win a lot. Don't believe me? Go ask Hermie. I'm his favorite lawyer, and he hates lawyers. So give us a call at 540-721-6028 and let us help you. Or visit our website at www.vastanleylawgroup.com. That's www.vastanleylawgroup.com. At the Stanley Law Group, we'll make sure we're the lawyers that you swear by and not at. I mean, South Boston, this historic track, one of the most uh, original, one of the original tracks NASCAR raced on, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They raced uh, the NASCAR race there. I was looking at a, a sheet not long ago. Richard Petty won there, uh, 71, I think Wendell it was. Scott won when this, uh, did Wendell win? He, won, he didn't win a NASCAR sanctioned event. He won, he won a, a, a sportsman yeah. deal there. Yeah. So, I mean, but first, first African American yeah. NASCAR, Jackie Robinson yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. I mean, amazing family. Yeah. Uh, they're over at New College, uh, the Wendell Scott Foundation. Great people. Love them to death. Yeah. Well, you think about South Boston in general, and you think about the last 20 out of 25 national championships come from South Boston. What do you mean? Well, the national championship for the year. 
Oh, Peyton you mean Sellers, uh, like the weekly series? Yeah, weekly series. Like they, they're coming. So that used to be a Winston weekly series. Now it's like uh, it's one of those auto parts places. Yeah, Vance, Vance. It's Vance. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, if you go look in the region of all the national championships, they're, what, they're, what the national championship is, you run in your region and you accumulate enough points that you crown the national champion. Yeah, there's of a, the weekly racing series yeah. in these small short. Yeah, there's a point system. The nation. There's a point system by how many cars is in the race, so how many power points you get. What your average finish is, I think you take your top, whatever, 17 or 18 races. I can't remember exactly now. It's been a while. And then you compete against other ones. And they, they have it everywhere. I mean, Bowman Gray is part of the NASCAR Weekly Series Championships. And I think Chris Fleming was third a couple of years back. And, Elliot and, Sadler won one of those. Uh, I He's got a grandstand think, after him. Yeah, he does Herbie have a grandstand, yeah. But I'm just saying, people know. So how many? Wait a minute. Say that fact again. So it's like twenty. I can't remember. I looked it up here not long ago. It's like twenty some out of twenty eight. Twenty one out of twenty eight national champions of the last thirty years has come, or twenty some years has come from South Boston. From that series. From that. From from. That usually means a local racer. That means a local racer in this region that races at South Boston generally is your national. So champion. what does that tell you? I mean. Great well, track, well, that racing. tells you that South Boston, other than Bowman Gray, has one of the highest attendance in fans. Uh, it has a better car average because it goes off of those point systems. So it tells you that South Boston is doing things the right way. So let's talk about South Boston track. Other than the Bloatingburg, which, look, I got I to gotta be honest. First time I went out there, um, I went out there during college. We'd go out there on a weekend if there was nothing happening in Hamden City, and it was an all-male you know, private yeah. school. So there was not a lot happening there. Right. a lot of times. Yeah. And we drive out to South Boston, one, one, a long trip from Farmville. And we go out there and watch the races. I never ate a bologna burger, believe it or not. Now I drank beer, but I never ate a bologna burger until I came there to a smart series event and I ate a bologna burger and ended up, ended up eating three bologna burgers. The really good with how the many, mustard and the relish. How many bologna, bologna burgers do you think I've ever ate? I'm going to say zero. I've never ate one. You've never had nope. one? I've never. So you don't like processed pork. <laughs> you just don't like <laughs> in a case, right? Exactly. You, don't, you don't like, you know, like if it's a hot dog, it's got the I've case. I've never had it. one. I mean, so I've heard, I've seen. You've I've never been had with... haggis, the Scotland, you know, <laughs> no. it's, that's a stomach intestine. No, I've never, I've never. Stuff. But I don't eat a lot of hot dogs, so you eat bologna burger. You've never had a bologna burger? <laughs> no. Okay, so the challenge is you and I got to go, go okay. get one. Okay, so I'll you take. You don't like bologna. I'm not a bologna fan at all, but, so, but, but, but here's the I'm deal. not either. But here's the deal. But it's fried. But it's tradition. And it's fried. So, I, yeah, so I, I got to try it, right? Yeah. And I, I'm not waiting on to do it. No better time at the king of the modifieds. Right. For the king of the gut, right? I right. got to have a bologna burger. one bologna burger. <laughs> we'll go get it together. We'll hold it. Yeah. In but, fact, there's a concession stand. We've got, so Dominion Energy and uh, SLG Consulting, Stanley Law Group, we've got a suite. Yep. No pace of is going to be next. So yeah, we're in turn one. Yep. On March 23rd, Saturday, March 23rd, or rain date Sunday, yeah, March 24th, <laughs> yeah. for the King of the Modifieds race. Um, but uh, the concession stands right underneath. We'll do it. I, I, we'll you document smell it. nothing but bologna burgers. <laughs> In fact, I believe that we're catering through the event, and we might have asked for bologna we did. burgers. We did. We did. Chicken <laughs> fingers. We did. And hot dogs. Yeah. So I don't want to see you out there picking off the uh, chicken fingers because you've you got two encased <laughs> pork meats products. On either side of you. Right. So we'll grab one out of the bin there. But, we'll do it. But we're, we're very excited about what's going on. But let's talk about South Boston. Yeah. Uh, had to be built, what, in the 50s? When yeah. NASCAR and short track racing was coming yeah, back? Yeah, uh, 50s, late 60s. I mean, I've, I've looked at some of the modified racing. I've got some great pictures and stuff of the modifieds in the 60s. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've, they've got to be in the 70-some anniversary of the I, I don't know the number now that I think about it. I mean, I know where Martinsville's in the 70s, but I mean, is, I have to look that number yeah. up. I don't Maybe know. Maybe my uh, trustee. Yeah, look it Aaron up. Aaron Arnold. It? Yeah. My uh, right-hand but, man, also my legislative aide, but works here at the firm, and uh, he's the guy that sold me that freaking camper overpriced. Do you remember that? Yeah, I did. When I decided I had to get a camper a little bit yeah. bigger than Hermes. That that you knew nothing about. That trend. every time something happened, I, you got called me and said, I know you had a camper, American Eagle. You know, yeah. Can you help me out? You, you've you been very good about that. You, you started me on my camping. I did. Ways, I did. I, I'd rented a camper. True story. I, I did. Is, uh, true story. Yeah, look it up. Don't ask me. A, yeah, just find out what your uh, self post is starting. Way to screw up the friggin' podcast there, Aaron Arnold. Um, so, so yeah, so the first race I went to was a Pulaski race, actually pace ended up coming down, but I rented an RV from like, like Airbnb or whatever it was, RVs to rent. And, um, 
and they put it up on the on the hill and, and you're like, oh no, no, that's not where it needs to be. It needs to be yeah. the track. And so you went, I mean, you were doing a hundred different things. You went and picked that camper up, got got it off its uh yeah. Uh, yeah, off the uh, off the. I put the, and, I, put, I put the rollouts in. Yeah. I put the uh, jacks down. <laughs> jacks I down. mean, I did that back in the day when I had my own American Eagle for quite some time, and I I, I enjoy camping. I, I, I you're going to make me want to get another one. Is what you're going to do? Yeah, you, yes. you need to get one because camping's know. camping's the best thing. Oh, absolutely. So once we did that, I brought my whole family down. It was a nice camper, and I can't remember the guy that rented it to me, but he was wonderful. Um, we spent the weekend there. I actually was, uh, had a meeting on Zoom while I was there, uh, and all they could hear on the Zoom meeting, I had to turn my was that was, car. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, uh, and so, uh, and so we were bit by the bug at that point. Yeah, you gotta uh, be. And the next time, thing we did was, we are like, well, we got an auto racing team, let's, let's buy a camper and yeah, follow it around. That's what you do. Spend so more we money. bought a Class C. When you buy a race team, you spend more money. Yeah, bought a Class C. <laughs> immediately at the hottest day of the year, North Wilkesboro. I mean, it, it was, was hot. hot. It was hot. It was friggin' Sahara Desert But how much hot. fun did we have at Wilkesboro? We had a great time. It was making history. And then I decided to go get a Class A. And that's where I met this ding dong over here, Aaron Arnold, who was at Camping World. And not only shits me on the damn trade-in. <laughs> Gave me a crap. Oh, you got some water damage here. We just put by then I'd been there. Six, the royalties was good. Right? Six freaking hours. He made oh, money he made off, off of it. He made bank. <laughs> when he had his salary requirements, I was like, you, you, then I need some money back for what I overpaid. And then he got me into class A. Did you, could you have taught him a little something about slide outs no, and everything? You no, did? See, that's part he, of He did not retain one thing, by no, the way. The retention <laughs> level on that is gone. Oh, you got to no, be no, able to do it. Because you can zero. really screw up something real quick. I, I on understand that, that. And that's why I hired him. Um, so I hired him. So he gives me a crappy deal on the Class C. I mean, you know, water, there's, look at this water damage. Oh, knocked off a bunch of money on my trade. Oh, nice. I paid cash for that sucker. And then says, well, you know, you can buy this one-year-old or two-year-old <laughs> RV, 30-footer. Or, or you, you buy can that, see this brand new. new. That's, that's a sales pitch. And then, you know, of course, I've got my young kids with me. And so the kids are like, oh, daddy, get the brand new you know, one. You know, you know. And then the- guess what? You know, we can't take that much off this one because it's only been on the lot 30 days. And I'm like, <laughs> so he spends nine hours. He fed me. Evolution of a con artist. A dried <laughs> a squid. The, the boy's got a gluten uh, allergy. So he's there goes, I got snacks. You want some snacks? Dried squid and dried seaweed. And I'm like. I, That's I could, hilarious. I never got that taste out of my mouth, mouth for 48 hours, but I didn't. Well, you've, you've had him in your I office was, since then. You ain't was, got the taste out the, no, forever. Two so years now. I pissed off about the price. That I didn't even think about the god awful thing he made me eat. And drove it off the lot, and uh, and that's the uh, RV we have today that we drive. That's owned by a uh, our consulting group, and we drive it to races. So, uh, but we love it. We we just this past weekend went and oh, oh man, we got an everybody RV spot. It. Buzzy, to clean it. Buzzy, everybody says, hey, was, hey, Senator coming? Like, yeah, yeah, he'll be here. Oh yeah, and I, and, and, and you cooking out. for everybody? I mean, oh, like yeah. you can't cook for one group. Every time we go, Southern National, all the place we go, Wilkesboro, come and eat. I come over there and it's. it's the smorgasbord. It's friggin' food <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Tenderloin. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Some of that stuff. It's steak. Woo, it's good. I don't mess around. Yeah. So uh, so camping has been a part of, you know, the racing experience for this family. And it's something we love. And what we kind of did where, and I know we're getting off topic, but because we got to <laughs> we got race, to, yeah. But this is what happens to you and me when we're on the phone and we talk a lot, is um, the experience of camping is actually just you're boondocking out there, you're hanging out. But you're there at the racetrack for the weekend. You're meeting everybody from the groundskeeper to to the owners, to the managers, to all oh, the yeah. race car drivers, to the to people you. that matter. It just makes it so much fun. Yeah, and it and you know hanging out with with Buzzy is just you know like the best. And so uh, we've been hooked on that ever since. But uh, oh, and Aaron, the guy that oh, made me overpay for my RV, has said this to me. South Boston Speedway was built by E. B. Buck Wilkins, Dave Blunt, and Lewis Spencer. It's a quarter mile tr- dirt track in 1957, joining NASCAR three years later, five years after opening, racing surface was expanded to 0357 miles, rebanked, and paved. Oh, nice. So, I mean, 1957, that's... That's that, getting it back here. You were like 10 or 11 back then, right? No, I wasn't even born yet. I wasn't even a twinkle in my daddy's eye. <laughs> 10 years before I was born. <laughs> but think about that history, though. We're talking about South Boston Speedway, and we're going camping there, too. Uh, if the rain doesn't mess us up, I think we'll, we'll do it the entire time. And um, what a great track yeah. to run the King of the Modifieds on Saturday, March 23rd, or Sunday, March 24th, if rain yeah. stops it. Yeah. It, well, you know, you got to think about ownership. You know, Nick Kodowski and those guys have really done a good job. That's since the guy the, that owns Pocono. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We Nick, met him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nick's great a great guy. He's very knowledgeable, great um, 
um, track promoter. Um, he does a superb job with the field of cars, the payout, everything else, and he 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 knows his stuff. And I worked with him extremely well with Pocono and and his mom, and now here at South Boston. And you know we li- we like people like him because they understand racers, they understand promotions, they understand series, and you know we I, I told him I wanted to do something like this, and he's you know he's all for it, and you know you got to partner with these things because the track can't take the full brunt of the responsibility because it's a big risk to them. Just like this weekend, we got weather coming in and yeah. it's an unknown. They're willing to work with Weather's us. It's been tough on racing last year. It has. If you noticed in the last two years, the pattern has been Friday, Saturday and Sunday morning. It's just been that weekend way. Rain. Yeah. And it's I mean, been it ruined. At, you know, I mean, uh, I, we did this Daytona. in NASCAR when I was working in NASCAR is like 96 or something. We had that follow us for a while. I mean, it was Monday racing for like seven or eight events that year. Which so suppresses the amount of people that can come out. Oh, well, yeah. It changes all of it because people don't, you know, usually, you know, r- they make a plan to come Saturday, but they've already got another plan for Sunday or whatever else. And so it always goes into, you know, or uh, in our deal, a, a refresh mode of how, you know, what we're going to do and how we're going to do things. But thank God they let us go the next day at South Boston because this is such a big event. A lot of people's traveling anyway to come, especially from up North. Um, you know, we got Hirschman pit cat. Um, yeah, let's go over the list here in a second. Yeah. But, uh, Aaron, who's trying to make up for the overpricing of the RV. And can you believe I gave him a damn job? No, I, so, you lost so your mind twice. An RV. <laughs> so, 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 but I looked at him, I said, man, a guy like you needs to be in the law and politics. If you can talk me into overpaying <laughs> yeah, for yeah. and give me a yeah, shit. I'm, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say in my oh, mind yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. If you can, if but, you can sell me this, you but, need to be over here in but politics. There's a value because when I went to go de-winterize the thing, I, I brought double A with me and, uh, beep, pop, beep, pop, beep, pop, boop. And I'm like, Done. what's that? <laughs> what's that, bud? And, and he taught me how to turn on the heat, but I was so scared. <laughs> I didn't do it. So I, well, I, I came remember, back and said, look, man, you're going to be out there with me. Well, I remember one heat. time at uh, Pulaski and you didn't know how to cut the heat on. And I come in and had to show Laura how to cut the heat yeah, on because yeah. it was freezing in that well, thing. But then my wife starts talking about, you know, like how the thing's going to blow up. So, so it's like, <laughs> I start to freak out. Like, what if I do something? What if I poison them? What if it blows up? You know, she, she gets me going and then I'm like, I'm, I'm paralytic. I just stop acting. And I'll <laughs> get up. But, uh, <laughs> Aaron brings me this other thing. South Boston Speedway held its first uh, NASCAR Grand National, which we, which is Cup, right? Yeah. Uh, now known as the NASCAR Cup Series in 1960, the legendary Junior Johnson won that race, held on July 8th, 1960. That's awesome. After surviving a hard-fought side-by-side battle with Ned Jarrett that lasted for 108 laps before Jarrett's engine blew. Yeah. I mean, that's a history right yeah, there. That's good stuff. I mean, if that's your first race... Yeah, and now you got King of the Modifieds here on March twenty third, this Saturday, March twenty yeah. third, going to run around the same track where Junior Johnson held off Ned Jarrett after sixty four years some later. laps of of battling. Yeah, when you think about it, sixty four years later, that's 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 pretty that's, cool. a, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Wait, wait, isn't it 50? 50? No, 50, uh, 50, no. Look, look, I, I did good in math. You're a politician and you're a lawyer. Don't worry about it. The only thing you collect is the check. We we added up. <laughs> 64. It's okay. Just, all right. It's all right. Sorry. No, you are good at math. Listen, <laughs> I became a lawyer because I sucked at math. I couldn't stand the sight of blood. I didn't, I didn't sell. Not much left I, for me I didn't sell $3.6 billion in souvenirs and not know how to add. <laughs> I bet. I bet. You're, you're counting a lot of cash back right. in those we, days. I could, we could, you don't know the cash stories yeah. we can talk about right now. So do you have any, so you, you know, you've raced and, and you've been around racers. Uh, NASCAR used to race there for a long time, then kind of yeah. quit. Yeah. I guess as it got bigger in the nineties. Yeah. Um, you know, you have any memories of South Boston yourself growing up or being involved with Dale Earnhardt Sr.? Yeah. Uh, man, I, you bring this up, and this is one of the most unbelievable stories there is. I'm so So, <laughs> I'm just it, Well, that's what I'm saying. This is why I got to start the book. <laughs> right. So, I'll help you with So, that. Hank Jones wanted me to come to work for him, and I had already knew Dale a little bit. Um, being my dad was GM at the racetrack, and I would got to know Dale a little bit, but Hank didn't know the correlation between me and Dale when I was in high school. And so <clears throat> Hank comes to me cause I helped him pull his souvenirs out of the mud across from mom and dad's when they first let the souvenirs park on the Martinsville speedway it was across the street at the main entrance. Oh, not down where you, they would not let you go down there. Oh, So they got stuck in the mud. Used to be a big hill right across behind them. They got stuck in the mud cause it was mu- anytime it rains. Yeah. It's a horse pasture type mud, right? Yes. 
So I pulled, took my daddy's tractor, uh, granddaddy's tractor, and pulled him out. And Hank's like, you need to come to work for me. I was, I was working at DuPont. I was working as a lag operator there. I was working Bassett Walker screen print. And I was actually going to school to be a surveyor. So I was doing oh, engineering. Yeah. I, was, I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and I was working for surveying for Lawrence Cochran. And so Hank says, why don't you come to South Boston with me? Dale's got to meet you or he won't, you know, he won't like, he won't like, you. if you don't like it, we're not hiring you. I'm like, ain't no problem. So Hank comes and picks me up and takes me to South Boston. How old are you? Um, 20. Okay. And, uh, cause I'd been, I'd been out of high school a couple of years, been trying to go to college and work these three jobs. But anyway, so he didn't know me and Dale knew each other. And so uh-huh. we, <laughs> I didn't tell him. <laughs> and so we, we go to South Boston and he's all the way down there. Hank's like, Hey, um, Dale, you know, he's not going to come up to you. You know, he, he's, he, he'll probably stand back and watch you a little bit. You know, he's, he's be standoffish a little bit till he sees what's going on. And at the time, Venus, my, my wife was with us and, uh, he says, just let it, just, just don't, don't press him. Don't do anything. So Dale's practicing when we get there, we're in the infield back then. You just pull right up behind your hauler, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, so we're practicing, it was dirt. And so Dale comes in <laughs> And he pulls around and he pulls up and he takes his helmet out. And he said, what's up, Chris? Hank said, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he looked at me and he looked back at Dale and he said, y'all know each other? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, you coming to work for me? And he said, yeah. And so, I mean, that was kind of it. The ironic thing is it rained the race out. It yeah. rained the race out on Saturday. And so Dale was trying. So yeah. So Dale was trying to find rooms because there was no rooms. And I lived in Martinsville. And I said, well, we're just going to go back to Martinsville. You can come stay with us or whatever. He said, no, I'm going to go up here to it's a place right up a road about 20 miles. It's called Twin Lakes, I think it is, a resort or whatever. And they found some rooms. But the next day, he wrecked on lap two. He wrecked on lap two Ooh, and left. Out? Yeah, he was out. He destroyed it. I got a picture of it from oh, old, wow. old sake memories. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So South Boston is special to you. Oh, yeah. It's very special. So what made you think, you know, you, back in the day, let's let's talk about how we get to, to the king of the modifieds. I mean, this is a great idea. Yeah. You know, you were saying, how do we take the sport to the next level? I knew we had those conversations. How'd you settle on king of the modifieds and South Boston? Yeah. So after looking at all of it, you know, we're, we were just throwing out things of, you know, what's going to entice it? You know, what, how can we promote around it? You know, how do we make it the biggest event, you know, and you, you looked at all the other events that goes on and you're like, I don't know. And then me and Dillner just kind of said, well, what about, what about the King of the Modifieds? You know, what about, the, you know, being the King, you know, we're like, yeah. And when you think of King in our world, you know, you think of in modified worlds, Richie Evans, Ray Hendrick, right. Right. You know, Mr. Modified. And, or the King himself. Yeah. Richard Petty. Yeah. I'd say never seen Richard Petty in a modified. Unless he tore his front fenders off and he looked like a modified. <laughs> no, but I mean, when you give something the king status, it is, it's, you know, it's the, the ultimate, the it's chain. the top of the food mm-hmm. chain. He's crowned the right. king, right. right? And so we're like, uh, that kind of sticks. And so we started inner circle thinking about when can we run it? What's the best time? You know, is it a special event, non points, you know? And so then we talked to Nick and Brandon at Sobo saying, Hey, you know, Wilkesboro would be a good destination place for it. But to be honest with you, our sponsors and some of the things that we were talking to has a fight there in Virginia. And so we needed to look at all different aspects. And of, the fight you're talking about is Pace of Madness. Yes. And other skill game companies are trying to get legislation, actually got legislation passed. Yeah, I know. To good make job. A, a totally, you know, legal yep. and legitimate once and for all and to help small businesses yep. in the, in, throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, make ends meet in Biden's uh, high end, high uh, index inflation economy. And, uh, right now it's sitting on the governor's desk. This, we are now, as we're taping this, we're about a week, a week and a half. This race is two weeks out after we left the general assembly with the, with the bill on the governor's desk and two weeks before we go in to reconvene to consider any amendments by the governor to that bill and others and to yeah. the budget. So the timing's pretty perfect. I yeah. Mean, well, we for pay somatic, I would for pay somatic. And, and we wanted to do it for them because they've given so much to us. And so we just started putting our heads together. And then the, you know, the king of the modifieds come about, you know, running a little bit more laps, 26 more laps than we normally do 125 because we normally run 99. So, so how does that change things? Um, well, is it gas? It, it, we're going to have to fuel um, just because you, in a track of that size, you can only run 178 laps. And of course, we've already run them out of fuel at Caraway. 
two years ago. We won't never do that again. Right. Um, and so we have to be cognizant of that and we don't let them usually fuel just because of insurance and other things. Yeah, well, you don't want an accident. You don't want an accident. Right? You don't want somebody to get burnt. So they're going to be wearing full fire suits. Yeah. The ones that's doing the refueling, refueling and okay. stuff. But my point is, um, we're going to do it as a controlled, but we're not going to normally, we normally stop at a stage at lap 30. We're not going to stop this time. We're going to throw the, um, bell helmet stage flag for the top three and then we're just going to furl it back up and put it up we're not going to stop we're going to keep going going to keep going you know we're going to let the race play out like it should you know what i'm saying so let's talk about the structure of the, the king of the modifieds yeah largest one of the largest purses ever on the east coast south boston speedway we know why you picked it we now we know why you picked the date talk about what the race is going to be like i mean how many cars what's the setup what can the fans expect when they well, come the, out on saturday yeah. march 23rd or sunday march 24th if it's a rain date uh, for the King of the Modifieds with the Smart Tour. So what you're going to expect is is we're going to do more of a show. Number one is is we're going to uh, we're going to have the pit party like we always do. We got a concert going on. Bart Lattimore, uh, Peanut Patch, uh, another one of your sponsors. Oh yeah, they they come on board. Peanut Patch is what? Uh, Peanut Patch is a, a company that does snacks. They not just do. Boiling peanuts, even though that's one of their... So that's boiled peanuts in a can. Yes, now You're absolutely. talking about throwback right there. Yeah, that is throwback. That's my granddaddy that's th- stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody at first was like, oh, man, peanuts at the track. I mean, hey, you know, what are you talking about? I'm like, we're good. I mean, it's snack. You know what I'm saying? It's in a can. You know? It's going to blow into the race. Exactly. I'm cool with it, right? <laughs> so uh, they're, they're going to bring... Um, they're gonna they're gonna sample some boiled peanuts. Oh, so people can go there. They and can go there. Sample they can sample it. In a can. Yep, they're and gonna be there. Me, they're actually good. They're very good. I would I would scoff at that too, <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, you eat one of them, you're like, you, and then you start eating them, you can't stop. Yeah, yeah. So that's another one of your sponsor, yeah, sponsors. Sponsors, and so we're gonna have the concert. Uh, Bart's gonna be in, in part of it. We're gonna have the stage down there, and we're gonna have driver intros, which is a little unique for us. We only try to do it once or twice because of time. Um, we got a lot of guests, not only with Dominion and, and uh, Vista, bringing some of their people yeah, down. Pacematics coming bringing, down. They're I bringing hear. vendors, operators, convenience store yes. uh, yep. operators. They're going to yep. be there. Yep, but they're going to be there. And then uh, we're going to have, you know, a 30-some car field of the best modified drivers on the East Coast. It's going to, you know, race for a large purse, 20000 It's going to be 20 plus because if they lead laps, if they— 20000 to win. It's twenty thousand to win, but the, the winner can win more. It's you win the purse. stage. Oh, it's a huge! It's huge. And then you get you get cash for winning stages and it's having the fastest lap, lap and, and all the other bonuses that we give throughout the event. Absolutely. So the winner could walk away with a lot more than twenty thousand oh, yeah, dollars. They could, yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're talking about purses that are in the realm of you know, you're talking five, ten thousand yeah. dollar purses. So yeah. this is double what oh, yeah. a big race purse would. Be. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then not only that, but every car is going to walk out of there with a. With a purse check. No, you're going to get 1200 to start easily, but, I mean, from 28th on, it's 1500 Now, more. that's got to bring some of the greatest racers on the East Coast, oh, yeah. modern modified, open-wheel yeah. modified racers, not just from the Southern Modified Tour. No. You've got a great lineup of 23, 26 drivers that right. come out every week. But you're now going to attr- you're now going to attract race car drivers from the North, aren't yeah. you, and from farther South yeah. that are going to come and run in this race. Talk about who those guys are going to be. Yeah, I mean... I mean, these are guys so, from Wheeling so the, and, yeah, and oh yeah. NASCAR fan yeah. and all. So the who's who, I mean, Matt Hirschman, who runs with us some, but I, I know everybody. Yeah, whatever. Matt's, <laughs> Matt is a super. They call him Big Money Matt Hirschman. Big Money Matt. he wins all the dang time. Dude, he's meticulous. He's very good See, at what he does. My, my, um, my 12-year-old kid doesn't like him. Uh, but we, he wins too much. We beat Bobby Labonte. We, we mean, love winners. loves Bobby We Labonte. all love winners. Okay. Okay. Right. I know you do. <laughs> I mean, so, he's a really nice guy. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Matt Hirschman is yeah. really nice. So, so but he and he's a big time winner. I mean, yeah. So, so Tommy Baldwin breaking his seven in Y with Kobe. Wait uh, a minute. Wait a minute. Tommy Baldwin's coming down to compete against his son Luke Baldwin, yeah. who's running the seven yeah. VA yes. for me. Yeah. And Hermie Sadler at yeah. Sadler Stanley Racing. Yeah. He's coming. He's bringing Kobe. He says. For oh wait, tw- I know why. Because on Twitter, you pissed him off. <laughs> Maybe you challenged him, and he said, "All right, I'm coming down from New York with a New York driver." Pretty much. In the 7NY. So you did this. I, well, I, I won't take the full credit for it. He blamed it on Carson winning two in a row. And, oh, right. and, and so, Carson you know. Carson Lofton, yeah. young boy. Yeah, who's doing extremely doing, doing great. great. God, he's awesome. Yeah. He, so, he, so is Luke Baldwin. Luke, who's, let me tell you something. Tommy Baldwin's there's, son there's runs for us. They're he's, great. He's like, what, 16, 17? Yeah. Yeah, 17. Seen him yesterday. I mean, amazing. Yeah, he's good. No, yeah. he's good. He and has. Then, so that's what ticked him off. 
Luke Baldwin, I mean, uh, Tommy Baldwin says, I'm coming down bringing the seven in white, yeah. the black and silver. And I'm going to whoop everybody's um, butt. Yeah. That's what he says. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, Appreciate that. Well, I'm sorry. So now I'm going to have father and son. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe, conflict, maybe they'll come down to the last lap and bang each other and, no, no, and win. No, no, no. Every time something bangs into our cards, my, my wallet, the wallet goes to, the other direction. It starts to itch and then it turns into a burn and then suddenly it's on fire. And I'm running around like, that's oh, help me, Oprah that's, Winfrey, that's, I'm on fire. That's worms. They have oh, something for that. <laughs> that might be what I ate. But, okay, so you got you got Luke Baldwin, yeah. you got Tommy Baldwin coming down, you yeah. got Magic Mike, uh, yeah. Hirsch, Matt Hirschman. Yeah. Who else you got coming down? Uh, so we have... Uh, um. <laughs> We have. Uh, Are you blanking on me? No, I'm, I'm trying to. Pull, I'm trying to pull it up so I don't give you false information, <laughs> sir. No, I don't want so false information. But you've got all the smart stars coming, right? Yeah, I got to all the smart stars. So you got Burt Myers. So I'm going to go down the list, and that way I can yeah. just we can just roll through yeah. it. So we have Anthony Bello. These are the drivers. Sam, 79 with Anthony the Hillbillies. They, he's been doing, running pretty racing. good. Doug yeah. Colby, 70 and Y. Tommy Baldwin, Brandon Ward in the 04. Brandon, good guy. You have Joey Coulter in the 02. Another good guy. Uh, Gary Young in the 45, which ran extremely fast in the practice session That's Thursday. Unbel- I, don't, I don't, it, it was amazing. Yeah, he, and usually he, Gary's, you know, yeah, challenging. Yeah, he's challenging, but he ain't challenging this week. He come, he come, he come loaded. Daniel Yates, of course, Ryan Newman. You're, Who? You're, Ryan Newman, your oh, old yeah. driver. I love Ryan Newman. He, yeah. he drove for us and, uh, and went with um, who did he go with? Renfro. Randy he Randy. went Randy Renfro. But That's a great I combination. Love, I love Randy's Ryan a good Randy. dude. I re- I love Ryan to death. I wish we we kept him on, but uh, man, he went on to a great opportunity, and we were able to create that, that opportunity for Luke Baldwin, uh, a young driver. So it, it worked out for everybody. Yep, Matt Hirschman, of course, I've already mentioned Brian Law. Why do you keep mentioning Matt Hirschman? Because he's money, Matt. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Danny Bone. Uh, Danny Bone. Danny Bone's bad, bad to the bone. Bad he's, to the he's, bone. Good, he's a good dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned Lofton, not Carson, but Brian. Okay. Uh, Steven, that's his daddy. Yep. Steve, <laughs> that's his daddy. Steven Kopchik. Who? NY. Steven, uh, he's been running up north for quite some time, runs a different series. A very good so uh, driver. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing down another northerner. Uh, I got Frenchie's car from up north, uh, Jake Crum. Okay. Uh, one of the pole at Caraway. Yeah. Um had a had a motor problem, but yep. he's coming back. Uh Austin Cockenash. He runs Can he's the champ. Up my no I, <laughs> I pick with his name all the time because I can't say it. Cockenash. Yeah. Cockenash. We'll have to make sure we don't bleep that. Yeah. He's in the sixty six. He's from up north. Uh Tyler Berry from the Berry Racing yeah. family up there with the oh, fourteen. Yeah. Um, a lot of history with the Barry family and stuff from up okay. north. Um, he's running the eight NY. Caleb Hetty is coming back in the ninety nine. Caleb Hetty with in the Jamie 99. the Jet Tomano. Tomano, yeah. What Tomano hey, owns the car? Yeah, he owns it. Yeah. Oh, really? But he's not running. Uh, uh-uh, uh. He's letting Caleb Hetty run it. No, really? No yeah. Tomano. No, okay. he, he's right. he's coming. Uh, Does he run Wheeling too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be at Richmond and a lot of other places. There's like four or five of our guys, like Putman and. Tomano and of course Tommy's car. You guys run uh, three or four events. Yep. Uh, Renfro's trying to run a couple. Coulter runs two or three races a year down south. So we we have about six Burt once or twice. All right. Who else? Um. So we got Jaden Harmon. He's from up north. He runs the fifty one. Okay. Woody Pitcat, which everybody knows Woody. I mean, if you know Open Wheel Modify, you know Woody <laughs> yeah. Pitcat. Woody's, Woody's coming in the 88, so that's and, good. And I hope the Pitcat doesn't run against the Quackenbush. Because <laughs> it could be like a real yeah. accident it waiting could, to happen. Yeah. Uh, Tom Buzzy, the 25. Tom Buzzy? Yeah. Tom yeah. Buzzy, the Tom, old man? No, Tom Me. Tommy Buzzy. Yeah, they say put Tom on there, but it's Tommy. Well, there's Tommy and then there's yeah, Tom, Tom Buzzy. Yeah. I love me some Tom Buzzy. He, he's a good dude. Uh, they don't get much better than that. Oh my God! It's, Jimmy it's, Wallace. Okay. Rusty Wallace's brother. <laughs> no Ken. <laughs> okay. Jason Tuttero. Trying Tuttero. to pump this up for you. Uh, man. Jason Tuttero. Okay, Tuttero. He runs wheeling. Yeah. Yeah. He runs twenty two for us, and he uh, he's a really good dude, uh, down to earth. Um, I don't know if you find another better person than him okay. in Maybe general. Maybe I haven't met him. No, oh, he's great. I'll introduce you this week. Right. Luke Baldwin. Who? Luke Baldwin. Who's he racing for? Um. Hermie Sadler. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Sadler family racing. Yeah. Jonathan Cash. He he Who's races he for, the for Senator. So, uh, yeah, Jonathan Cash is our, our other guy because, you know, you, you got the announcement, and of course, you know Bobby Labonte even better than I do, but 
Uh, Bobby got an opportunity to, to work to get back with JGR Joe Gibbs. Racing. Best opportunity he should do it. And yet, one hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, he then he comes. Here, down, then he don't even run practice laps or nothing. He comes down to Caraway and finishes in the top three. Yeah, how'd you like that? Well, then, it just tells you he's so good. So is he showing up? I think he wanted to show up, but there's some other things that he's doing at Gibbs. One of them is training <clears throat> the owner, cookout son, yeah. uh, to do some things, and I think they are running. Um, at Dillon, so I think he can't come. Uh, I think his quote was, I get paid the same whether I run a $20,000 race or a $4,000 race. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, okay. not, I'm, just thro- I'm not I'll throwing shade at you. I'm just I'll bring it to Chandler. Yeah. But, man, what a great guy. I mean, we yeah. had him last year. I mean, he finished so great and won last two out of three races and really put Smart Modified on the map. Uh, everybody started taking notice even bigger than they, they did, and we have some great stars. But... Um, <laughs> All right, finish the list out here. I know you got an important phone call there calling you, but uh, let's go through the list, what we got left. Yeah, so um, uh, we have uh, Carson Lofton. Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, Jimmy Blewett is racing his own car. Showtime. Yeah, the man. Showtime. Showtime Blewett. Blewett bringing the 76. Bringing his own car. Yes. His daddy's Cadillac. Yes, he calls he's it. bringing his daddy's Holy Cadillac. Holy cow, Jimmy, Showtime Blewett. Now, I tell you what, that's, that's one of the drivers when – when we decided to kind of change up the yeah and bring in the young, I said, "Well, let's get him, let's get Blue it in Sadler Stanley Racing." But I don't know; he might have been too rich for our blood. But we uh, he's a great dude. A he's not only an ambassador, but uh, you know he's forty some years out now, forty seven years, forty some years old now, and he's our senior ambassador for all of modified racing. Yeah, he's a legend. He's a legend. I mean, the Blue it family. Yeah. You know, the Blue it. Yeah. Uh, they had like a junkyard where people would yep. go get parts for cars for race cars. Yep. All right. Who else? Carson Lofton, which we've mentioned. Yep. We got the Myers brothers, Jason and Bert. Bert Myers, last year's champion of the Smart Series. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Great guy. Yeah. We got Bryce Bailey. He's a, he's a client, so treat him well. Uh, what, 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 if he's a client, that means he's been doing some things wrong. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I just I check only, it. Okay, I just check I, it. I, I just check it. I only represent innocent people. <laughs> okay. Every single right, one right. of my clients right. is not mm-hmm. guilty. Okay. All right. All you right. hear me? Yeah. Bl- uh, Bryce Bailey. Well, give from- us a call. It's Stanley Law Group, 540 <laughs> One of your sponsors. Stop it. It's <laughs> Bryce Bailey, 23 NY from up north. Bryce oh, wow. ran with us at Florence. Um, really good shoe. Um, Blake Barney. The Barney family Barney from family. up north, yeah, good. Uh, Twenty-seven. Um, they're going to be good. Wall Stadium guys. I mean, they they're going to be yeah, fast. Wall Stadium. Yeah, they know the racing. Yep. Uh, Paul Hardwick. And you must. You have to be doing something great to pull them out of the north to get them to come down here. And run. Well, listen. I think, and I and we talked about this with Jimmy Blewett last night. I think we're the platform that we're putting together is they're having fun. It, it, when you can have fun and enjoy the history of the sport, and then do it with people that have history in the sport, right. It makes you respect those drivers well, that much more. And it also more. elevates the sport, yes. too, especially because yes. now the Southern fans and the Southern drivers are getting a race with maybe guys they don't, don't yes. race with usually. Yes. And the same for them coming down and they're, they're getting the respect. You know, the Southern drivers are respecting the Northern drivers and the smart drivers are showing off for these yes. Northern drivers that they can keep pace with them all the way through and run a great race. I mean, that's great. Now, okay, is that everybody? Nope. We got uh, Paul Hardwick, not, not, G, not the little one, the third. The, right. the 13 year old, because he's got to wait another year to race. I would think. His dad's coming down. You can race 14. Yeah, 14 is our, it's if, NASCAR's if, rule, it's our rule. I thought Bobby Labonte said, if I can't whip his ass when he gets out of the car, well, that's 12. He shouldn't and, be on that's the 12 track. and 13. He that's not 14. On the track. <laughs> <laughs> you're, so, you're staring the pot, you jack leg. I so, thought that was the greatest I, thing I, I ever heard when he said that. So, let me go on. Andrew Krauss, right. which is uh, Wall Stadium. Um, uh, they own the Krause family owns the uh, Wall Stadium up there, so uh, he's really coming. To Richard Krause, uh, n- guy no, that works for me. No, not no. Chris Krause, Richard Krause Jr. <laughs> <Right, laughs> that's a joke right, right, in that. Right. But uh, right now, that's the list of 30, wow, 34, 34 cars. Yeah, right now. So what's yep. the limited number of cars you can put on that? Thirty six. Okay, we, you can do more, but you don't want to. So if we can call Bobby Labonte and maybe get, yeah, you, get him here, he's in. <laughs> yeah. How about well, Sunday? It's, it's a rain coming. Yeah, so it's tell him, yeah, just tell him to come Sunday. <laughs> it's Sunday. Okay, yeah. so what's the, now that's the lineup of the drivers, ladies and gentlemen. What is the format? How are we going to run? Are you going to put all 34 cars on yes, there? Yes, I am. Okay. So, so it's just so, off. So with the rain coming in and the, the not getting 40 to 42 cars for the qualifier, our plan right now is to uh, <clears throat> start all 34 cars. Um, and the track can handle it. And the track can handle that. We, we have that many pit that. spots, uh, stops, pit stalls for that. Um, so we've talked to the track about it. We're going to get together tomorrow and talk about the rain and just see what we're going to do. If there's anything that needs to change, if we move it till Sunday. But 
right now it's like 75% last night and it's 90% today. It said 90%. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be Sunday. And you know the internet's never wrong. Yeah, that's that's a lie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got my thing. So, yeah. so, okay, as we do this, this is coming out probably tomorrow, and we're going to play it and pump it and, yeah. and keep it going. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have just qualifying. Let's, let's go through the calendar schedule. I mean, you got the time schedule. Uh, so that people know, and will this be the same if it races on a Saturday or a Sunday? No, it'll it'll change a little bit. So, <laughs> so let's talk about the schedule for yeah Saturday. Saturday, yeah, for the so, King of the Monarch. So seven o'clock, we the, the 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 track opens for us. Seven o'clock in the morning. Yep, Saturday morning. Yep. Uh, yeah, and usually I park my RV there. Yep. And so I'm usually woken up to the sound of uh, of haulers coming in with their cars. Okay. Seven o'clock in the morning. Yep. Everybody's going to unload, yep. and so, that's not going to change Saturday or Sunday. People no, are coming in Saturday. No, we'll, we'll we'll open by eight o'clock on Sunday either way. Okay. And so then we go into our deal. We go into tire draw. Uh, takes about two hours. And then at this point, practice will begin at nine o'clock. Um, the, the late models and then the Hornets. And then ours will be from. Uh, late models, we know. Hornets, some of those people that are listening to this podcast may not know. That's basically the four bangers. The little Toyota cars, yes. they, they bust out all yes. the windows, yes. they spray paint the yes. number on the side, and they yes. give it hell. Right? It's your mom, It's your mama's uh, car that you just put roll cage around. <laughs> they, <laughs> and the best part is they sound like hornets. They do. They do. They sound like a, like a nest of hornets. Yes. And uh, that's usually where you see some fisticuffs, too. Yep. So 9 to 1030 is when we run our solid hour and a half practice. Oh, um, okay. Then we will, then the gates will open. At 11? Yep. At 11 o'clock. And then... Uh, Basically, our drivers meet and they'll, they'll go about eleven o'clock till about eleven twenty-five to eleven thirty, okay. and then qualifying will start for the late models eleven forty-five. We're we're set to go off around twelve o'clock. Okay. Take about fifty minutes, and then uh, one to one fifteen. Um, we, that starts the best part of the whole event that you put on every week. That's yep. the pit party, right? Yep. We'll start Fan the fest. we'll start the pit party. Bring the fans down. We'll have the concert uh, with Bart Lattimore that'll go on there for about 30 minutes. And for everybody, bring your kids, come out on Saturday, March 23rd, check your listing to make sure it might get moved to Sunday, March 24th. But you definitely want to come and get the whole experience, especially if you can get in there when the gates open and you see the qualifying. But the pit party is where you go down, the cars are all parked on the front stretch right there at the start finish line. Uh, the driver's out. They usually got hero cards that they supply and they autograph and they talk to your kids and they talk to your friends. If you're a fan, if your family, your friends, get them down there and walk up and down the historic South Boston Speedway front stretch and get to meet these drivers and and really get to know them, shake their hands, tell them thank you, and get a get an autograph. I've got a bunch of those hero cards up in my office at the Senate office in Richmond, and I love it. Of course, they're all my drivers, but uh, in Hermie. So, uh, but you you don't want to miss that. How long does that go on for? It uh, about, 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 about 45 minutes. Okay, so and, and, from about one fifteen to 2 o'clock. Yep. On the front stretch, you got the pit party. Yep. And then we'll have pre-race. I mean, like we'll probably move based upon the amount of cars. The last chance won't be going on. So we'll. Last chance, last last chance. was a qualifier for those outside the 36. Car. That's right. That's correct. But you're not hitting 36. Yeah, we're not. Not so yet. I think we'll start every one of them. Okay. And then pre-race ceremony start at 245 and racing begins at three. And we'll, we'll probably go off at around four. Four o'clock, four fifteen, and so it looks like at the South Boston Speedway, set for this Saturday, March twenty third, at three p.m. The races start. First is the Sentara Health Late Model Stock Cars, a hundred lapper, and then your Hornets, the VSP Heat Hornets twenty lapper. That's always fun to watch. And then the Smart Modified Tour King of the Modifieds kicks off with a hundred and twenty five lapper. That's right. Is that right. That's right. So you're not just going to see the Smart Modified Tour. You actually get some warm up with some late models and some Hornets. Yep. That gets you in the mood yep. and gets you ready to race. Get to see Peyton race. Sellers and all those uh, late model champion Peyton guys. Yeah, Peyton's running. Peyton is a heck of a guy. Yeah, he's a good Danville, dude. Virginia. Yes. From Dan Vegas. Yep. Now, <clears throat> at the conclusion, when one of my race cars win, yes. tell us what we're going to see at that moment. So we, uh, we because this is the king of the modifieds and, you know, you are the king, right? I so king. we have we have built a crown that we are going oh, to. Oh, you're kidding me. We, oh, it gets better. A crown. A crown. Like a king's crown. So when the driver comes in. Not one of those Burger King crowns right, made of Before paper. anything happens. A sweet with, crown with jewels. Jewels all Bedazzled around. Bedazzled shit. Bedazzled gold. Uh-huh. Red uh, velvet. Oh, right. Oh, the cap. Oh, it's bad to the bone. Like something the King of England would wear. 100%. Or the, but it, but it gets the Burger King. But it gets, oh, every bit of it. But it gets better. Okay. So we have a king's robe that I built. A robe. And a cape. Uh, have I showed you? 
No, you have not shown well, me the, the rope. The fans can't see it, but I got to show you. Okay. So I tried it on when I picked it up yesterday. Of course you did. <laughs> Took a picture. I did. With the, with the, uh, I did. With the king I did. crown and the robe? I did. Oh, hell yeah, you did. Oh, my God. How many Dalmatians did you kill for well, that? Well, not thing? only Dalmatians. That looks like Cruella de Vil's look, look at all the checker oh, flag checker sleeves flag. and stuff all oh, down yeah. through it. Look, this thing. You look like Cruella de Vil. Hey. <laughs> hey. Ladies and gentlemen, my don't bring your Dalmatians. My stilettos this. don't look as good as hers. <laughs> don't bring the Dalmatians to this race. <laughs> That's a good looking rope. That's but, an actual rope. That's not but, a cape. But That's better than rope. that, before anything could be done. I mean, you could wear that to the pool. I, I wore it all day yesterday. I, I wore, I wore it after I took out a shower this morning. It's got the smell of Chris Williams <laughs> on it if you win. So, but we have a decree, a stroll that or we're like going to unravel. Stroll that yes. you unravel. Yeah, we have to. We have to announce the king of the modified. Some of those gold. Oh yeah, hands. it's got smart modified on it. Oh, the whole deal. We're going to present it to the winner with the crown. Are you going to read the? What's we're going to before anything can be done. We're going to read. Wow. The king of the modified has wow. has entered. That's some Victory production, Lake. my man. Hey, we ain't playing now. So this is going to be a hot race, man. I mean, this is. I mean, you've got everybody you read off of that list um, can win this race. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the great things about open wheel modifieds is the guys that come out there. You know, a lot of like we say, grassroots homespun teams, great engines. And, you know, the rules package you put in place has really made it great racing. You know, when you look at that list of the just the the smart modified stars, you know, I look at that list. Any single person on that list can win that race. Yes. Now you're bringing down some of the top stars out of the north. Yep. Everyone can be a champion here. I mean, yes. you're going to have a lot of great racing, 125 yes. laps. Oh yeah. With great some of the best yeah. open wheel modified racers yep. in the country mm -hmm. at South Boston Speedway on Saturday, March 23rd, or Sunday, March 24th. Now let's talk about if if it rains because right now. Yeah. You and I have been looking at this dang weather thing for three weeks. <laughs> and are like, come on, baby, don't rain, don't rain. Yeah. I take cold. I take cold before I take rain. Yeah. And But South Boston has had, at least for us, a history of yeah. rain. We had yeah, a absolutely. rain delay uh, one year. Yep. Um, but we still had a great crowd come out. Um, what do you see is the possibility? Will you, if you're going to, if, if the rain looks like it's coming, are you going to move the race back? Later on Saturday? Yeah, just a little. little well, we're going to try to, I'll, I'll go through the process. Or are you going to do it Sunday? Yeah, so we're going to try to do it Saturday, depending on what's going on first. Uh, we'll take a look at the weather. Uh, but then we will turn around. If we see that you can't race it at night on Saturday night, <clears throat> we will get started on Sunday. Uh, we're looking at practicing at around 12 o'clock to around uh, 1 o'clock. Then their series will practice. We'll go through qualifying, and we'll try to get started around 3, 30, 4 o'clock on Sunday. Um, making sure that everything gets done that we want to get done. Um, still going to have the same parties. Still going to have yep, the pit parties. Everything we're going to do it. is the same. We're just moving it. And so if it's Sunday, what time should the fans get there? Uh, they'll be there about lunch. They'll right. start getting there around lunch. Because you don't start because Well, with church. We, know we have a church next door to the racetrack, and we don't, don't want to we don't want to disturb what the they're Lord. doing. No, absolutely not. We love him. Yep. And so at the same time, uh, we want to uh, – we want to get it in and get these guys up uh, and down the road that travel up north, get them back home to get to work. And so we'll try to start around three thirty, four o'clock, and you know we'll be done probably about six thirty, seven o'clock, based upon okay, you know the weather. So just want to know when I got to pack up the RV. I baby. understand, yeah, because I'm going, I'm going, <laughs> and now right now with the rain, I got to talk to my wife on whether we're going Friday or uh, Saturday. Oh, you got to keep coming Friday. Yeah, I mean, you got to enjoy the weekend. That's what I thought. There's nothing better than rain on the top Hopefully of the. She'll hear this before a decision is made, and maybe it will. You need a you need a tin mind. roof on your uh, camper. Uh, Aaron, get right on that. Do I need a tin roof on the camper? <laughs> That's why I hired the boy. He's, he's my leaks. camper man. He don't want it on there. <laughs> he's my camper man. In in fact, he still has the symbol on his phone. So when I when he calls me, it says Camping World on it, and I go, rrr, 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 rrr. "Oh wait, he works for me." So uh, so if you want tickets. To the King of the Modifies, the first inaugural race of what will be, right, Chris, every year? Every year. This is the every beginning of it all. Every year event, the largest purse ever, over $100,000 being awarded to some of the greatest drivers of Modified on the East Coast. Something you don't want to miss. Something you got to you gotta just say you were there to see it. And I'm telling you, if you've never been to an open-wheel Modified race before, it is some of the best racing ever. Aaron, you'd agree with that. Brought Aaron Arnold there for the first time, he and his wife. They were hooked. Now he's coming. You're going to be there Saturday. Meet Aaron Arnold. Get his autograph. We'll have a hero card with Aaron Arnold or actually just something with Camping World on it. And uh, you got to come to this race. South Boston Speedway. You can go get your tickets at southbostonspeedway.com. Modifieds. Uh, you can buy tickets right there for Saturday or you can come to the gate. Uh, but yep. you don't want to miss it. And again, that's www.southbostonspeedway.com. 
slash modifieds to get your tickets online. They'll be waiting for you when you get to the door or buy them on uh, right there at the door. And I think they're what, 15, 20 bucks? 17 bucks to pre, and then I think there's 20 at the gate. 17 bucks if you go on uh, if you go on and buy the tickets now. now online, 20 at the gate. Man, you can't ask for better entertainment for twenty dollars nope. a person. Nope. And kids and get a concert age, right in the top and of a concert. And and kids under a certain age get in there free or no? I I, I can't answer. I'm twelve. I, I, you're twelve. Can, can I get in there? For, you're you're in twelve there? mentally. I, am, yeah. <laughs> I identify as a twelve year old today. You ask my wife. She says sometimes I'm not. But uh, yeah. So let's see. Adult race day tickets seventeen advance twenty days twenty at the day of the race. If you want sweet tickets, they're $40 on the front uh, stretch suite. 12 and under. Get in to South Boston Speedway free. And get seniors 65. Buy a baloney burger. Military, first responders, healthcare workers, students with ID on race day, 17 at the gate only. You can't miss it, man. Nope. That's the best value for your buck. You know what? By inflation, not going to stop good racing. That's right. Hey, that kind of rhymes. That does rhyme. I like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, Chris, I want to thank you for this time. We got to get back and do this again, and we got to do your book. You got so many stories to tell, and I appreciate you got all, over the, all over the map here today. <laughs> we were. Um, but we've got the King of the Modified. Yes. King of the Modified. Cannot wait to crown the king and announce the king of the inaugural King of the Modified. That's right. Make way for the king. Pace of King of the Modified, Smith. powered by Dominion, Power. and Vista, and Stanley Logrip. And SLG Consulting. There you go. And Bell Helmets. And Golly. And, and Citrus Safe. And yeah. I, uh, RE. And Autos by Nelson. Yes. I mean, we got all yes. these guys. And the peanut, yeah. the peanut, patch. peanut Patch. Look, yeah. you've got great sponsors. You've got great racers. And you're going to have great fans out there. Ladies and gentlemen, do not miss this race. This is the first of what is great racing. Oh, hold on. In the I Colorado forgot. Show. Banker's Life. My daughter. I mean, daughter? you know, that's not good. Yeah, no, that's she, not you know, good. she's going to call me right when she hears this and oh, say, yeah. yo, you forgot me. Well, now you said it twice. <laughs> right. Banker's life, banker's life, banker's Haley life. Haley Williams, Haley Williams. I mean, look, look at all the sponsors you've brought on over the years. Hey, look, really they are all there. passionate about what they do. They love racing. Haley has to love racing because she grew she up in it, right? Yeah. And, her, and her brother's a spotter. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he, he, defending champion, yeah. right? NASCAR champion. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, but look, Haley loves it. She, she's in, Every time something happens, what happened? Who done this? Why'd they finish last? What was what was their problem? Why did they wreck? I mean, this is what I get she's always when she's the not point. there. Yeah. She's always oh, engaged. Really? Oh yeah, she loves well, it. And if you can't come to the race, uh, go to Flow Flow Sports Flow Racing Flow Racing on TV. It's live streamed. Uh, click on Flow Racing uh, live events, smart modifieds. Yep, you can get it right there. You can watch it. It's a it's a low dollar amount, man. It's really affordable and it's great racing. And and their cameras have gotten a lot better. And you got. Bobby Dillner. It's going to get better this week. Is that right? Yeah, they they, they got drones. No, no, no. They knew how big this event is. Extra cameras, pit reporter. We got it all this week. Wow. Yeah. And Bobby Dillner. Yes. My favorite. Yes. He's gotten great. Yeah. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for listening to this episode of Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. Make sure you go out this Saturday, or if it's raining, the next day, Sunday, this Saturday, March 23rd or March 24th, You've got the King of the Modifieds at South Boston Speedway with the Smart Modified Tours and those rascally devils coming from the north trying to take their money, their crown, and their cape that looks like Cruella de Vil's <laughs> Dalmatian thing. <laughs> so come out. Let's see. It. Hey, and if you if you want to look us up, uh, I'll be in turn one. Come out there. Uh, I'll be eating bologna burgers. I'm the chubby guy with bologna stuffing in his face. Uh, but we'll be out there as well. Thank you to Pacematic, who's our sponsor as well. Thank you, Pace Matic, King of the, uh, the Modifieds Race, powered by Dominion Energy. Yep. And Vista Installations, powered by my beautiful wife. And uh, SLG Consulting, also powered by my beautiful wife. And, well, <laughs> everything's powered by her. Yeah, so, anyways, pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. Uh, no Hermie Sadler today, but we're going to get him on. He and I are going to do a podcast at the race on Saturday or awesome. maybe Sunday. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. I want to see you out at South Boston Speedway this Saturday, Saturday day, March 23rd, or if it's a rain delay, March 24th. Come out and see one of the greatest modified races ever. Start to tradition. Bring your kids, bring your wife, bring your family, bring your friends. It's going to be a great time. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right. And I'm Homer Sadler. And I'm turning left. <laughs> that was a bad <laughs> There's no Hermie Sadler, but this is <laughs> Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pacematic. God bless you all.
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson with SaveWithConrad.com. You've heard me bragging on the podcast for years about helping people save money on their current house. But did you know that I can help you with your next house as well? That's right. We can get you into your next house with zero down. No money down loan programs are still available. And I know it sounds too good to be true, but we can do it for you. And by the way, home ownership is more affordable than you might think. We routinely turn renters into homeowners, and we hear back that their new house payment is more affordable than what they were paying in rent. Why would you keep doing that? Stop throwing your money away, paying for someone else's mortgage, and start building wealth for your family. And let my family help at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit to do this. We can improve credit scores down to the 500s, and it's worth mentioning, we never say no. We say not yet, but here's how. You need a game plan to buy a house, and that's where we come in at SaveWithConrad.com. We'll ask you, what down payment do you want to make? And zero is an acceptable answer. And what monthly payment do you want? And then it's time to go shopping. Find out how easy it is and how affordable it is to become a homeowner at SaveWithConrad.com.